Hey friends, welcome back to some more Reddit stories about people making some very questionable decisions. Hope you're all doing wonderful, and as usual, we're getting right into today's Reddit posts. I just encountered cave Karens. I took a guided cave tour today, fairly large cave and one of the largest in North America. As it goes with most caves, there are various stop areas that are wide and spacious for the group to spread out and look and take pictures along the way. When people shuffle back into the single file walkways, naturally, the order of people will shift around. I get into the cave in the group about mid-pack at the start. We get to our first big stop area, and as it all works out when everyone is shuffling forward to the walkway, I end up towards the front of the group on the way to the next stop. At the next stop, I see a woman with the classic Karen haircut, glasses, bodily stance, glaring at me and pointing at me constantly, whispering at her husband, clearly upset about something. As we all crowd in to listen to the tour guide before moving on, I hear her whisper clearly behind me, Get in front of him, that's our spot. He's such a rude blank. When we moved onward, Karen dragged her husband and younger colleague, or daughter, and shoved past several people back to what she must have deemed their rightful spot in line. From that point onward, Karen made it her special mission not to enjoy the tour, but to police me and where I was at in the tour group, glaring back and keeping a sharp eye on me. I could make out words like, where is, okay good, he better stay. Okay whatever, I'll take the high road and give them space. Eventually they wander off to look at something at the last stop area, before we boarded a bus to go back up to the Cave Tour lobby building, and I ended up ahead of them again. Karen loses her mind when she sees me up ahead, and there behind several folks. I could hear her complaining and whining the whole ride back to the tour lobby about, quote, the nerve and selfishness of some people. So inconsiderate. He's a total blank. Her husband kept telling her to calm the f*** down. I casually get off and head through the lobby gift shop and out front, get out to my car and start it up so the AC has a chance to cool it down before I leave. Karen and her group walk past. She sees me and gives me the finger from both hands before her husband yanks her forward, clearly having had enough of her attitude. Calling the cops because no one picked up the kid I was babysitting. My boyfriend and I took his ex's kids for a last minute overnight stay, since the father of the kid cancelled on her. She had plans with her friends for the night, and we weren't busy so we took him overnight when the baby daddy billed on her. We told her we had brunch reservations the next morning at 11, and while we were happy to help she needed to pick him up by 9am. She knew this and agreed when she dropped him off. Well, next morning it's 9 a.m. and she isn't here yet. We text and call her with no answer. 10 a.m. rolls around and we try calling her again. She picks up in a very groggy voice and tells us she's got the worst hangover and she won't be picking him up until 2 p.m. We remind her of our brunch reservations and she tells us to take him with us. This kid is two years old. It is not enjoyable to take a child this age out to eat. My boyfriend cancels our reservations and gets ready to have this kid until she decides to pick him up. I am furious at this point. This is not my child nor my boyfriend's child. I call her and tell her if she is not here by noon, I would be calling the police to collect her child. She only lives 15 minutes away. She calls me a bitch. I then told her she had 30 minutes to come get him. I waited an hour and there was zero sign of her. We couldn't drop the child off to her since she lives in an apartment complex that you need to have access to to get in. So I called the cops and told them I was babysitting and I don't know where his parents are. They were supposed to be here two hours ago. They basically treated it as they would a lost child. They took him down to the station. Little Miss finally rolls up at 3 p.m. and gets belligerent when she discovers I had actually called the cops and gave her child to them. She calls me all sorts of wonderful names and storms down to the police station. Edit. We didn't know where she was or if she'd even gone home. We also couldn't contact the father since we had no contact information. The mother of the child is also neglectful and this was the last straw for us. She'd maybe change his diaper twice throughout the whole day, on a good day, and multiple times I'd seen her refill a bottle that hadn't been cleaned in days with actual rotten milk inside. Neighbor parks in my driveway, threatens to report me to me. A couple of years ago, I bought three houses on a busy street with no street parking. We'll say 44, 46, and 48. 
All three were owned by the same person previously and were poorly maintained rentals. I live in the top half of 46 and rent my basement and the two other houses out. I use a property management company so no one deals with me directly. I came home the other day and the car that belongs in 44 is parked in my driveway. There's a bunch of people standing in the driveway of 44, so I roll my window down and call to the owner of the car, who I recognize because he's always parking like a jackass, that he needs to move it. We're having a yard sale. Okay. And? Can't you park behind the house? On another street. At this point, I get annoyed and tell him to either move the car or I'm going to have it towed. He gets huffy and starts ranting at me about I know your landlord and how he's going to report me for being a crappy neighbor. I just laughed and went inside after he moved his car. In case it wasn't clear, I own the house I live in and the one he lives in. I have no doubt he knows the old lady who sold me the three houses, but if that's the case, he should also know she sold them. Bonus story, when I first got my dog, he told me she was too big and wasn't allowed there, then got crappy when I ignored him. So who did you think the do not enter sign was for? Some years ago, I worked at a freight yard. Access to the place was pretty tightly controlled. On any given day, there'd be hazardous chemicals, millions of bucks in the latest Japanese electronics, or even military equipment just hanging out, waiting to make its way across the country. But we did like to play nice with our neighbors and the public, so if you showed up wanting a quick tour, we'd find someone to whiz you around. This boomer aged man who showed up one day was one of those. His pappy had worked there just after the war, and he himself was a proud member of Local 1233 in Newark. He seemed kind of bummed when I told him to keep that under his hat, as the guy he was going to get shown around by was going to be a teamster and, you know. Or maybe not. Everyone's busy. I let this guy know that I'll do it myself, but that it'll be about a 20 minute wait. He walks out of the office, presumably back to his car to wait. Not 10 minutes has gone by when a truck driver pops his head in and says, You gotta get out here. This guy decided not to wait for me. He apparently saw how the arm for one of our exits worked and decided to go on without me. Unfortunately, in addition to the arm, there were signs, do not enter, wrong way, and the most important one about 20 feet farther in, stop, severe tire damage will occur. Dude had shredded the front tires of his car on the spike strip we used to ensure that the exit was only an exit. The first words out of his mouth when I got to him were pretty much all I heard for the next five minutes or so as I got him out of our exit and back into the parking lot. This is f***ing bullshit and piece of crap rental car. But the PS de resistance came afterwards when I asked him if he needed to borrow a phone to call the rental company. No, the man says, but I will be calling the police and you best be thinking long and hard about how you're going to make this right by me or I'm going to make sure you spend the night in jail. Gotta be honest, I laughed. The local police were useless, and all they'd do is call the on-site special agent anyway, so I went back to my office and cut out the middleman. Let's just say the special agent was not amused. I stayed in my office with the window open just to hear the conversation, and let me just say that the open window wasn't needed. Highlights included, Are you really that stupid? There are signs. And of course, the title. So who did you think the do not enter sign was for? When the special agent started playing with his handcuffs, the guy was finally clued in that maybe, just maybe, he might have screwed up. The rental agency had a tow truck there half an hour later. He never did get that tour either. Reporting my wife for bringing me snacks in the hospital. I am 32 and male. About two years ago, I was diagnosed with binge eating disorder. To put it simply, I eat compulsively even when not hungry. My BMI is 43, putting me in the class 3 obesity range. Since my diagnosis, I have not improved whatsoever. Therapy and support groups have a positive effect on my mentality, but even two hours after, I'll be in line at a drive through It has affected my health, my mental health, my finances, and of course, my wife. My wife is 37. She is average-sized, and eventually agreed that I may need actual medical intervention. After a lot of deliberation, we packed up and temporarily moved states, so I could participate in an inpatient program as part of a research study. 
Apparently, intervention programs for BED can be pretty hit or miss, and so this one is a new take on them, being 6 months instead of the typical 30 to 90 days. I am currently at the end of my first month, and everything is going very well. I've made a lot of friends in the program as well. At the end of the one month mark, visitation opened up, and my wife could now visit me. Obviously, she jumped at the chance and came to visit me two days ago. We headed over to my room, where she took her backpack off and pulled out jalapeno chips and colas, two of my most common binge items. At first, I freaked out, but she explained that I deserved a break, and went into detail about how much trouble she went through to smuggle them through. I immediately shouted for a nurse, who forcefully removed the products from her hands and then escorted her out of the hospital with a full team. My wife has now been completely banned from the premises, and she's furious at me. The nurses and doctors have expressed nothing but gratitude, and told me that had I indulged I would have instantly been removed from the program. Car blocking my driveway to load their kid. I was coming home after a long work day and starving and I go to pull into my driveway. That is until I realize someone is blocking the driveway. I kind of looked at them and put my hands up, motioning for them to pull forward. There was room for them to pull forward so I could go around them. I assumed they just didn't realize they were blocking my driveway. But when I rolled down my window and motioned for them to pull forward, they did nothing. Then I was like, hey, this is my driveway because I assumed that maybe they just didn't know. But nope, they knew they were blocking the driveway and then got all aggressive and said, yeah, well, we're loading the baby. I couldn't even see the baby from my side, so this was news to me. I guess I was supposed to tear up and say, oh, no worries, anything for your adorable angels. But instead, I was like, okay, can you just pull ahead a little so I can get in my driveway? And the girl came around holding the squirming brat and said, or you can wait a few minutes. I said back, this is my driveway. I don't want to just chill here in the road. Why can't you just pull up one car length? And she yelled at me to just say thank you. Like what? I still have no idea what that meant. Then the guy says to me, we are living across the street and have to deal with this now. Again, I just said, dude, just pull up so I can get in my driveway. They did not pull up, but made me wait so they could load their child. Anyway, that's going to be it for today, everyone. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Be sure to drop a like on the video if you enjoyed and hit that subscribe button so you can be notified whenever we upload. So I'm out of here. Have a nice day and I'll see you next time.